And I've since learned that when you really look at the evidence, the truth is it takes more faith to be an atheist than it does to believe in God. You've really got to ignore the facts. Well, it's funny how we equate the word atheism with intellectual. Yeah. It's the exact opposite. That's right. Kirk, I have an, uh, an intellectually stimulating theory. It's my theory of where the soda can may have come from. Billions of years ago, there was a big bang in space. Nobody knows what caused the big bang. It just happened. And from this bang issued this huge rock. On top of the rock was found a sweet, brown, bubbly substance. And over millions of years, aluminum crept up the side, formed itself in a can, then a lid, and then a tad. And then millions of years later, red paint, blue paint, white paint fell from the sky and formed itself into the words, 12 fluid ounces, do not litter. You're saying, what are you doing? You're insulting my intellect. And so I am. Because we know if the, if the can is made, there must be a maker. If it's designed, there must be a designer. To believe the soda can happened by chance is to move into an intellectual free zone. It's to have an echo when you think. It's to have brain liposuction. Hold this, Kirk. Behold the atheist's nightmare. Now, if you study a well-made banana, you'll find on the far side there are three ridges. On the close side, two ridges. If you get your hand ready to grip a banana, you'll find on the far side there are three grooves, on the close side, two grooves. The banana and the hand are perfectly made one for the other. You'll find the maker of the banana, Almighty God, has made it with a non-slip surface. It has outward indicators of inward contents. Green, too early, yellow, just right, black, too late. Now, if you go to the top of the banana, you'll find, as with the soda can makers, they placed a tab at the top, so God has placed a tab at the top. When you pull the tab, the contents don't squirt in your face. You'll find the wrapper, which is biodegradable, has perforations. Notice how gracefully it sits over the human hand. Notice it has a point at the top for ease of entry. It's just the right shape for the human mouth. It's chewy, easy to digest, and it's even curved toward the face to make the whole process so much easier. So you don't see God in anything. You don't see God out in the world. Everything's designed for us, like the banana's designed for us. It fits in the hand. It fits in your mouth. It fits in your butt. Do you think Not that's in mine, what, maybe in yours. Do you think that was the intended purpose? Do you realize that the bananas that you, that you eat, the bananas that you're looking at, are actually cultivated plants created by humans that don't exist in the wild? They can't reproduce on their own? Do you realize that? God didn't make the bananas you eat. We did. Whatever. Oh, so you can make a banana appear in your hand right this minute? No. But I can make something that looks like a banana appear in my hand. I realize that a lot of believers have fallen into the trap of Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron and this fascinating argument about how the atheist is the or the banana is the atheist nightmare. But come on, Matt, it has a, a peel that indicates when it's ripe, yes. and um, and you know it's curved to go toward the face. Yes, color coded, you know. Seriously, that I can see how someone would find that convincing. Yeah. Um, in that case, why isn't the coconut? <laughs> I mean, cl clearly well. you think God designed the coconut, too. So if God designed all the diversity of life, and you can just <laughs> go around and pick one that you think demonstrates that it's God's special plan for you to eat it. Uh, so banana, um, which kind of handy. Coconut, <laughs> kind of hard to get into. Well, I mean, not, really not to mention... I personally feel that a steak is way more delicious than the banana. But I have to say that the steak is not convenient at all to extract from no. nature. <laughs> no. But I mean, I mean, coconut, banana. And then, after you've made this wonderful argument about how the banana is proof of God, which would imply that the coconut is also proof of God, except the coconut doesn't fit anything. And then we find out that the banana you're talking about was actually created by human beings. Natural bananas, plantains, don't taste the same. They don't feel the same. They're not shaped the same. They don't work the same. Um, they're completely different. So basically, if God did create all this stuff, uh, he kind of sucks. And we want up him by creating a tastier, handier banana. I mean, if your argument's valid that the banana's proof of God, then we should have a valid argument that we've one-upped him already.